Hello adventure lovers and welcome back to a brand new episode of the walk through the conversion. This is your host Vidushi. If you are new here, Motorhome Adventures is a three decade old company that rents and builds all thing home on wheels and more. Ranging from a club on wheels to election campaign vehicle, food truck and of course caravans, RVs, motorhomes. You name it and we can most definitely build it. In today's episode, we will be walking through a 5200mm wheelbase chassis that has been converted into a camper van. We recently did a trip with it and that is why we are in a different location. Currently, we are in the midst of Manali and Solang and today, finally, finally, we are going to be walking through this conversion. The name is Harper. So without further ado, let's walk through this conversion. Painted in a white pearly color with black as well as yellow highlights, Harper is a camper van that can easily sleep up to 12 people. The current configuration that we do have is only for 10 people but this can be extended up to 12. Now speaking of the vehicle, you know the drill, we are going to first talk about the exterior, roundabout from the driver's side to the co-driver side and then in we are going to hop. So first up, the fascia. And even before that, let's talk about what a chassis is. We did explain this in a couple of other conversions that we launched. For example, Castro. Castro is a chassis based conversion. A chassis is merely the bone, the skeleton that you get. Unlike the Temu Traveler based conversions, wherein you get the complete shell build up with it. Now that we have cleared that, the front fascia has been customized in house, including the complete exterior, the bodywork as well. So this one has been based on the aluminium body, aluminium shelling. And then again, coming back to the fascia, you can see it's a bit different than the normal buses. Now we'll be moving to the driver's side. So this right here is the driver's side and a caution, a caution before we hop into the actual walkthrough. As I said, we just completed a 14 days venture towards Ladakh and there was a lot of things that happened in the trip, a lot of things that happened to this camper van. So we are going to shoot it as is. So you'll have to bear with us with the dust, with the sand and even with the dents. We do have a story for that, which I think by the time this walkthrough is getting released, it's going to already be live. So if you are here, do check out the vlog wherein we featured this adventure of Ladakh that we did. Coming back to the walkthrough, as you can see, we are currently on the driver's side. Tucked underneath are usually our boot spaces. However, in this one, we because we have this expansion about which we are going to be talking really, really soon when we enter the inside. But because we have a complete expansion here, the complete hydraulic system has been stored underneath, which is why we did not utilize these two spaces as the boot spaces. Coming to the rear, Tucked underneath the camper van is the tank. So we have two tanks. One is the freshwater tank, another is the black water tank. And then this right here is your exterior shower. Now, Harper is a really big camper van. That means you need a lot of help from the people who know how to drive this caravan, from people who know how to function this caravan properly. That means you're also going to have a couple of chauffeurs, attendants, and helpers on board and because of that we have created this exterior shower so the similar shower that you get on the inside is on the outside as well so we have the cold as well as hot water connection and this is the thing that we have talked about in a lot and lot of videos so if you do know what this is then you need to comment it down if not we'll link a video for you wherein you can get a detailed information about how important this little function is coming to this side so in here, we have again our rugged genset stored in. So this one is a 6.5 kVA EU silent genset. It's a patrol genset. Now coming to the rear end. As I said, guys, these are the dents that occurred when we traveled to the Ladakh sector. Actually, even up till we did Ladakh, there was nothing but right when we entered the Himachal belt these accidents all happened 
in the Gara Loops. If you do not know what Gara Loops is, it's a 21 hairpin like bend kind of road wherein there are 21 hairpin bends. And we were traveling there at night time. So it's bound to happen. But what can we do? So we'll be ignoring that because she supported us through that brutal journey and she drove through those terrains like a beast. Coming to the other side, this here is our second expansion that you can see. Usually this is the kitchen space and we do convert it into a PCR room whenever we convert this camper van into an election campaign vehicle. Underneath, we have more booth spaces. So the first one here, it has a lot of knickknacks. So both your cylinders, if you'll come to this side, you'll see both your cylinders have been stored in. We have a hammock, we have tissue paper holder, and we have the cover up of the camper van. So that's the first storage coming to the second one. So this here is our table chair setup. As I said, we did this trip and we completed a 14, 15 days itinerary with a group of almost 22, 23 people. So that is why we have a lot of camping chairs, tents, sleeping bags and whatnot, all tucked in, stored under this booth space. Moving to the third booth space here. This here is where we have our spare tire, more camping equipments and other amenities. We also have a jack. I think that's a jack. Now to this one, again, a lot of tools, a lot of accessories that may look random to you, but I can vouch for it. We did in fact use all of these amenities, all of these tools and functions that we had provided in this camper van. Now we are on to the driver side. So we are now in the cabin area of Harper. Now, as I said, we did convert this asset. So since past three or four years, I think we are planning to launch this camper van, but we couldn't because of some or the other reason. And last year, in fact, this was officially launched as an election campaign vehicle, but we did not shoot it. This time around, we tied up with a news agency for the previous elections. And because of that, we converted this whole camper van into an election campaign vehicle. So we do have a complete walkthrough of that coming really, really soon. As for the cabin area, as I said, it's a huge cabin area because we need to serve a lot of people. We need to cater up to 12 people. And because of that, we have to have a lot of attendance a lot of staff members on board so as you can see this is the co-driver seat this is a huge seating space and then opposite side we have the driver space this complete area converts into a bedding and then on the top right here this is where we have our drop down bed so you can easily sleep up to three people and i can vouch for that because three of our staff members throughout this adventures of ladakh they slept in the camper van and they said that it was a very comfortable space as well apart from that speaking of the amenities that we do have in here Currently, we are charging the batteries of our drone. So the main power unit is right here. The MCs are all there. Then we have the inverter right here. On the opposite side, we have a dashboard that has been painted in a walnut deep chocolate truffly kind of color. This is a fiber dashboard that we have customized in-house. Apart from that, we have a nine inch Android. All the controls, that is the control panel, for your slide outs, the control panel for discarding the black water are all with the driver space. On the top, if you'll pan up, you'll see that we have the AC. We have both auto as well as static AC in here. The louvers that you're seeing, those are the auto ACs. And this right here is the static AC. Apart from that, we because again, we have the music system. So we are bound to have the speakers in here. We have a fan and that is all about the cabin area. Now we're going to finally move to the salo area of Harper. So come on in. So right when we enter, the first thing that we see is the control panel. This unit is connected from the salon space and the same unit is connected 
to the cabin area which we are not going to go into right now. Other than that, we have a smart music system here, a smart TV, an Android TV, a microwave, a fridge, and a lot of storage here. This is a deep storage that goes into the cabin space as well. We have utilized this storage space a lot. We stored all the bottles that we had uh, carried from city to city, from place to place, and now we are using this storage space to actually store our shoes because there's a lot of people traveling on board. So everybody's shoes are tucked in here cleanly and what that does is once we enter the caravan we know we need to remove the shoes and enter in speaking of the basic things the standard amenities the lights that you can see on the rooftop are all led lights these function through a battery operated mechanism and up here as you can see we have a charcoal paneling so the charcoal paneling is very very light it is very very lightweight the material is easy to maintain other than that of course because we have a smart music system we have the speakers the jbl speakers up top and then another thing you can see is this auto ac all these louvers that we have here these can be shifted the direction of the wind can be changed and then up there back there we have the static ac so the big difference between a static worse in auto ac is that auto ac functions once you're running the capo one once the engine is turned on and the static ac as the name suggests it functions when the campo one is static so we have both the acs in here so to give you the overview of the floor plan here we have our beds here we have our more of our beds so first up we have this drop down bedding area with a press of a button you can simply drop this whole bed down and it's going to drop from the roof down using these belts it's a similar mechanism that we have given in most of our camper vans for example it's there in shiloh it's there in Ramler, it's there in Pramithu as well. These are all three conversions that we did on Temo Traveler. Other than that, underneath, you can see that we have a sofa, a dining come bedding area. A similar thing has been placed right there on that side as well. So I'm going to press this button right now. It goes up and then we bring it down. But to explain it to you, I'm going to... This is our dining area of which I was talking about. So you have a dining space with cup holders. Once you need to convert this area into a bedding area, simply undo the pole. And these logs right here is where this table is going to go. The back support converts into your bedding area. And then this whole area converts into approximately, I think a five feet nine or five feet eight kind of bedding space. We have concealed window on the front and then we have the curtains the same charcoal paneling so we have the lights right here on the top as well as on the top bedding we are going to quickly move back to this bedding space so whilst you're moving in the camper van the only way to place this bed is on the top of these sofas that you have so that it gets a sturdy space to station and then you can easily sleep up to two people on here two people down there two people there two there and then two on this side so on this side as well once we come here you can see it's a similar kind of dining station but here we have knobs wherein you're going to put in your table and once you set in the table you're going to bolt it which we are not going to do right now because we're going to be adding the overlays however the reason we have given this bolt kind of a table here is because there's a surprise element but before we talk about that we are again going to move to the opposite side so the reason we have so much space in this area is because this is an expansion so right now the space looks very spacious and that is because we have expanded this whole area if it wasn't for the expansion it would have looked very very clustered because again no matter how long the wheelbase is this being a 5200 mm wheelbase chassis is still going to fall short of the width that we do have however this expansion is something that we're going to be exploring right now so i have the walkie here Prashant, are you ready? So we are currently standing on the expandable deck and we're going to first up bring it in so that you can tell how much the difference is once we bring it in. Prashant, go. So this is the kind of area that we would have been walking with. However, because of the expansion, we have a lot of space. 
and this expansion functions through the hydraulics this can only be functioned once you station the caravan so this cannot be functioned once you are running the asset okay prashant expand it back thank you done so we're done with the expansion the first expansion that is this is the first area which is your sleeping seating space as i said on the opposite side we have a similar fixture this right here has been converted into a bedding as of now and that one right there is still the sofa space which has table set up as well there's a surprise element of which we are going to be talking about later in the video but before that here we have storage and if you'll quickly come here you'll see once we expand the caravan we also have a storage space here and currently all our camera lights equipment etc are all stored in here moving back to this storage space it's completely occupied right now i am so sorry for the mess so sorry for the chaos but it is completely decked up because we came back after a 14 day trip that too to a cold place so again for people who are maybe thinking this being a 10 to 12 people camper van does it have enough storage space yes it does because this storage space is very deep as you can see it completes it covers complete of my hand and that is how deep this storage space is similar is with these drawers again as i said fully decked up we have all the random stuffs in here same goes for the one that we have underneath there and then we are going to be moving to our next space which is the kitchen area so in our kitchen area first up we have a huge huge kitchen space in this camper van i think this does the justice to a 12 people kind of travel you have first of all a sink area which is covered up If you'll come up close, you'll be able to see we have a sink. The cleaning equipments have been stored here. If I cover it back up, this then becomes my cutting board or the island. And then we have a faucet that has both cold as well as hot water supply. We have drinking water tap. The system has been stored right in here. We have a lot and lot of storage space. We have the dishwasher. or if you want to put maybe the shampoo or soap here which i think right now it's mentioned that there's shampoo in here then we have cabinet space so this is going to be fully decked up right now we have our lazy susan the teas different kind of teas and all we have more storage here wherein we have a couple of games which i think our clients had left closing this back up this here is where you can maybe show your magazines or recipe books that you have this is a photo op burner as i showed in the beginning the cylinders have been stored outside for both inside and outside connection because we do have an outside connection for barbecues etc underneath here we have more storage so once we open this again as i said it's going to be fully decked up because our clients our passengers were traveling on board So we have the knives, various kinds of ladles, the serving utensils, etc. In here, and same goes for all the other drawers. This one has the kitchen towels, the cooking apron, and all. And underneath here is our exhaust. Now, whenever you're cooking on the inside, you need to have an exhaust in the kitchen area because it's going to get very hot. It's going to get very vacuum-like. and just to eliminate that we also have given a huge top hung window so that whenever you're cooking you get enough ventilation now if you'll move a bit back you'll be able to see i have my walkie back with me you'll be able to see that this kitchen space is not that big once we close it back this is going to be shutting off and then we are going to get less space up here uh shaker bhaiya can we close the slide out please so now we're going to open it back up the slide out deck bas bhaiya thank you so as you can see 
this is how much space we get with i think merely two feet of expansion we get a lot of space in here and that wraps up the kitchen area now we are going to talk about something that we have talked about a lot in the video and if you are our long term subscriber i think you know this portion by heart but if not then building bathrooms on wheels is in fact our usp we have been building bathrooms for various buses of paramilitary services such as crpf itbp and of course for our caravans as well now why the system that we are building is unique is because number one the fiber reinforced polymer material that we use that is something that's very lightweight it is all weather friendly it is very easy to maintain speaking of which we are now going to enter in the bathroom space So right when we enter the first thing that we see is this huge cabinet space currently it is as i said decked up with various things that we have used over these days apart from that in here we have another lighting and then we have our exhaust fan right there the button is right here as you can see the complete top the sides the bottom everything has been made up using the reinforced fiber polymers because of which this does not have any kind of cracks and with a simple swipe you can simply clean your bathroom space but another thing that we have provided is this commode setup in this one we have a manual kind of flush so once you put your foot on the flush it's going to be flushing up but in most of the caravans the kind of commode that we provide is the pneumatic activating wall based commode now ceramic toilets are not something that you need to have in your camper van because putting up a ceramic toilet in your camper van means that you're going to be using 10 to 15 liters of water per flush which even though right now we are at a location where we do have water supply at our bay is not going to be the case always so to eliminate that the kind of commodes that we usually provide these use less than 300 ml of water supply per flush which is a huge huge boon if you consider caravaning speaking of this caravan if you'll come up inside we do have a huge enough space which is not the case for all our camper vans so we have three people in this bathroom area right now and that is never the case of any of our bathrooms and that is because number one this is a chassis based conversions bathroom and secondly because we have designed this floor plan in such a manner so that we could have a lot of space to number one have a huge enough shower space so we have a head shower a hand shower both have cold as well as hot water supply on the other side we have our shampoo conditioner body wash etc this right here is a mirror which has been velcroed because everything in the camper van needs to be tucked in seamlessly so that whenever you're on the road whenever you're rolling it does not fall off but the major factor that i have personally enjoyed in this camper van is the bathtub that we have so even though you need to have a lot of water supply for this thing this is something that we have added to this bathroom area and i think this helped us because you are not supposed to be doing this when the camper van is rolling you're not supposed to be using the bathroom space or bathing up but i did in fact test this and whilst being seated it was very comfortable even though the caravan was still rolling this is not recommended but i did experiment it you have grab handles on all the edges so that whenever you're coming to the bathroom space if at all it is rolling you have sturdy grab handles so that you do not fall up top as you can see we have a profile light on the rubber wood panel and this one is the hatch that you can open up in case you require any kind of ventilation another key factor that we have of which we're going to add up the overlay of is the auto ac the ac louver is right here in the bathroom space as well which means if at all you're traveling at a very very warm location and you feel suffocated in the bathroom space you still have the ac to function up for you now we're going to move out now the first surprise element that we have in this camper van is right behind me so we have this entryway door which right now it looks like there's nothing but we have a remote right here once i press the button and 
there you have it a complete state space up here I can still go down once it's completely down you can simply remove this winch that we have it's a 5500 pound winch which means it can easily take the weight of up to 1 ton so once you have the winch open you can simply enjoy the out and about area right now as you can see there we have the views of mountains the solang valley's mountains and people are doing various activities and we can still set up our camping chairs and tables right here and be enjoying the view now we are going to move back in to explore the surprise feature number 2 So now we're going to close it back up. I'll be putting this remote back in here to explore the surprise feature number 2 which is right on top of me. Here we have the wiring system and using this button you'll have to stay up behind using this button As you could see with a press of a button we brought our lift back in now this whole setup was initially created because as i said this was supposed to be turned into an election campaign vehicle which it was converted for a news firm which used this for a course of 50 days and we did the customization as per their requirement after that we thought keeping the lift is going to be a good option because that gives people the access to the rooftop which is not possible in all of the camper vans this system as you can see right there we have used the similar kind of winch that we have and this can easily take a payload of 500 kg approximately but because of the space constraint that we have here we can only stand up to 3 people we did in fact test this with our passengers on board the adventure lovers on board and i think at once we took 3 people up top to carry them to the rooftop area so now i'll be going back up you have the first seal right here which you'll have to push and open and then on the opposite side we have a lock so that this does not fall back on you i'm now going to go back up so as you can see with a simple press of a button you get the access to the rooftop area which is not something that's possible in all of the camper vans here we have a huge patio area This entire thing is the setup the exterior setup of your AC and again even if we eliminate that space we still have a lot and lot of area to enjoy the backdrop to enjoy the view that we do have but now this is not the only thing this is not the only special feature in the asset we are now going to move back in but before that there were railings up here that we had removed for this trip especially because we knew we won't be using the rooftop area at all other than that on the top up here you can see each of the slide out has an awning so that you're protected through the rain as well now we are going to move to the third and final special feature which i think you guys are going to like a lot so for that we need to move back down storing our surprise number 2 back up in moving towards the third surprise element of this camper van which is going to function through these two winches so these again are 5500 pound winches that can each take a payload of up to 1 ton so this currently is in a bolted is in a locked manner once we move back we are going to see how this is going to get opened up So here we are with the open setup. Once the caravan is rolling, 
you need to fix this up to this area and bolt it properly so that even if this winch malfunctions which i do not think it would considering it has a payload of up to one ton but still if it does you do have this security mechanism and then this right here is our remote you'll have to come up to this side and enjoy the view with me So once you are done dropping down this panel, you have locks that you're going to place up right here so that this complete panel becomes your stage area. And to support the stage so that you do not have any kind of vibration, you are going to place the poles that we have down under there. We are going to add up an overlay for you to understand this. So this again was created for the election campaign purpose. All that to say, in case you require the vehicle for a rental purpose, for a long term rental, you can still get these knickknacks, these small customizations done in our existing camper vans. And that wraps up this walk through the conversion. If you are interested in renting Harper, as I said, we just completed this 14 days venture towards Ladakh and we did explore some unexplored locations. Some untaken roads were taken during which a lot of accidents happened. But we did do that for the sake of creating new itineraries, new curated trips for you guys. So if you are interested, please make sure to visit our website, which is www.motorhome.co.in. And in case you are interested in getting something of this sort, this big build, or maybe a smaller conversion on a Tata Yodha, on a Temu Traveler, on a Tata Winger, etc., then you can surely visit our website, which is www.caravanconversion.com. On that note, if you did like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for we will be posting many more fun conversion and travel videos in the home away home on wheels motorhome adventures signing off <laughs>